Hi again, it's Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. I'm working on a website right here that I want to publish to the internet. And so I'm going to show you in this video how you can publish your website to your web hosting account. Now you should know that when you're publishing your website, you don't have to wait until you're all done with it to publish. You can publish your website as you're working as many times as you want and whenever you want. But before you can publish your website to your hosting account or to the internet, you need to set it up in the software. In other words, you need to create what we call a location so that the software knows where your website is supposed to be stored online. To publish your website in 90 Second Website Builder is a pretty simple process, especially once it's set up. First, let's go up here to the File menu and you'll see that there is a button that says Publish. So we would just click on that. Another way to go there is to go to the little icon here at the top and click on it. That's the same thing as going File Publish. Either way, when you click, it brings up this window. Now for the website I'm working on right here, I've already created a location. But I'm going to show you how I created this location so that you can create yours. First I clicked on the New button and decided that this is going to be an FTP server. FTP, which means File Transfer Protocol, is the technical term that your host gave you for the credentials you need to connect to your hosting account. In other words, the IP address and your username and password for your hosting account. That's what FTP means. So I'm going to tell 90 Second Website Builder what it needs to know to connect to my hosting account and then generate the files and upload them to the server for me. So all of that information goes in here. Since I've already created one, I'm going to show you what it looks like. So I created one called .com Classroom because that's what I'm calling this website. Let me show you how I set it up. I'll select Edit and you can see what I put in here. Again, I chose FTP server, and then I called it whatever I wanted to call it. I called it .com Classroom. This is the name that will appear in the pull-down listing later when I'm looking for this connection. Because you can have multiple locations, because you can obviously build as many websites as you want. And this particular location pertains just to this website. So again, I called it .com Classroom. I also told the software the actual URL, or the web address, of where this website is going to be. The reason I did that is because, as a convenience, I can always click on this link and go to it at any time, just to see how it looks. For example, after I publish, I can click a link and see what my website looks like live online. So the software needs to know the address. Now for the rest of this information, which looks pretty technical, this is what you get from your host. In other words, your web hosting provider. They'll give you a host name. It's usually an IP number, not always. Sometimes they'll tell you to use ftp.yourdomain.com. But in most cases, you're going to want to use the IP address. Actually, it causes less problems if you use the IP instead of the ftp.yourdomain convention. But either way, you'll provide your host name. You'll also put in the port number. Now, this is almost always the number 21. This is basically the port that you have to connect to on your server to use the FTP service that your web hosting provider is giving you. The username and password are your FTP username and password, but they're also almost always the same username and password to your control panel, often called your C panel. These would be the same. And then finally, the remote folder. This is where you're going to store your website. Now, most web hosts are going to provide you with a folder called public underscore HTML. Not all hosts do. There are a few, like GoDaddy, that do it very differently, but most hosts will use public underscore HTML. Your host should tell you what your remote folder information is when you get all of these other details. To make sure that my connection is working, there's this test button. It's very simple. When I click test, 90 Second Website Builder just makes sure that it can connect successfully to the server. And you can see that it did. It checked the username and password and the IP number, and it shows me that the connection is just fine. It didn't do anything. It didn't send any files anywhere. It just connected to the server as a test. Now that's really all you need to know. Once this is set up, you're ready to publish any time you want to, and as often as you want, to your web hosting account using 90 Second Website Builder. But for those of you who are interested in a little more advanced information, you may wonder what this Explore button does. Again, this is optional. You don't have to go here. But if you want to know, it's actually a very cool feature of 90 Second Website Builder. By clicking Explore, you can actually look at your web hosting server's files. And as you can see, it immediately opened up my server. This may not look familiar to you if you haven't worked with web hosts or web hosting accounts before, but you may notice that there is a folder here called Public HTML. That's in fact where my website's going to be stored. If I double click on it, I can go inside. Right now, I have some folders in here already, but I haven't published any files yet. Also, this interface allows me to use 90 Second Website Builder as a conventional FTP program. 
I can actually delete files, download things, rename them, and change permissions. Again, all of that is more advanced, and you don't need to know about this, but if you want to, it's here. For now, I'm going to close this. So all we've really done is we've added our login credentials, we've named our location something so we can remember it later, and we simply click OK to save it. So now every time I want to publish my site, as I'm working on this particular project, I simply have to bring up this window and click the Publish button. Let me cancel out of here. And so let's say I was working on this website and I made a change to it. And I decided, well, I want these to be a little bit closer to the top. Even a change that small is fine. I can just republish the whole website or just this page if I want to by clicking that Publish button. So let's do that. I'll click Publish. I'm going to make sure I'm selecting the right location. Now in my case, I have a number of them because I'm working on a lot of websites. You may only have one here or none yet, but make sure we've selected the right location to publish to. And then I just simply publish. In my case, I'm going to publish the entire website and publish all of the files of the entire website. Here's what that looks like. I click the Publish button, and 90 Second Website Builder begins generating the files and then publishing them to the server. It even tells me what it's doing while it's doing it. I can literally scroll through this log and see what it's doing. This is not a very large website that I'm working on right now, so it'll only take a minute or two. Okay, so now that it's done, I actually have a log of everything that just happened. It actually found 17 files and published them to my host. I can actually save a copy of this log if I want to for later. In my case, I won't need to. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to visit my site now that I've published it. Remember we told the software the actual web address? Well, it's remembering that so that when we click this link, it knows where to bring us. We're opening up a browser and going to the actual website live online. Here's the files that I just published. And I can test my navigation and see how everything looks. It's really that simple. And then again, if I wanted to publish again, if I made a change, whether it was to this page or to another one, I would simply click the Publish button and click the Publish button again. Now let me talk to you a little bit about some of these options you have on what to publish. You don't always want to publish the entire website. Sometimes you'll only want to publish the page you're working on or a selected page. For example, I can select a page from my site manager by going to Select and pick a page that I want to publish. Or I can select the page that's currently open, which is what this is right now, the index page. I can also just publish pages that have subpages if you happen to be using the parent child hierarchy in your structure. I'm not right now. I can also just publish pages that happen to be using master page objects, another option. In most cases, I want to publish the entire website. However, I don't have to publish all of the files of the website. Now, what does that mean? The reason this option is here is because remember, your website is made up of not just HTML files, but also things like images. And sometimes images take a lot longer to load, especially if you have a really large website. If I was just making changes to my website that didn't affect the images, and I wanted to just upload the HTML pages again without having to wait for all the images to load, this is a great feature. I can just say publish entire website, but just the HTML files. In other words, no images. So remember when I published my entire website a few seconds ago, I sent 17 files up to the internet. Watch what happens when I publish just the HTML files. I'll click publish, it'll generate them, and boom, it goes much faster. And in fact, instead of publishing 17 files, it only published 11 files because six of them would have been images. So I'm going to close out of this and pull up the publish window again so that you can see what some of the publishing options are. Again, you can publish all the files, which is what you're going to want to do the first time. Publish just the HTML files, in other words, the non-image files. Or you can just simply publish all of the files that you have made changes to. This is really handy if you have a really large website. Ah, let's say you have a 20-page website with 100 images. Well, if you've only made changes to 5 or 6 or 10 pages or files, choosing this option will be really convenient when you go to publish because it will just send those files along. The most important thing for you to remember is once your published settings are set up, you don't have to deal with it ever again. You just simply come here, click the Publish button, and then publish what you want to publish. That makes working with 90 Second Website Builder and your web hosting account super easy. And it makes it really, really convenient to see what your website looks like online while you're in the middle of designing it. You can always publish and republish as you're working with your websites in 90 Second Website Builder.